Hey, what's up everybody? My name is TrophyNut and welcome back to The Witcher 3 on the Death March difficulty. We're playing Blood and Wine again and today we're gonna gather another of the Grandmaster Witcher sets. Uh, namely the Ursine gear, the Bear School gear. And for that, we're in Flovive, as they uh, call this lovely little town. I think this is also where we went for uh, the Twofold monster. So uh, I'm gonna show you on the map. So you probably have Flovive already. Lviv is right over there to the northeast of uh, Beauclair itself. And there we go. And there is the uh, ruin we need to check out. So, let's take a look. It seems like I could go over here, if I'm not mistaken. There's sort of a cave-in, but... Is this... Clear the rubble. There we go. Rubble cleared. And then... There's a bit of loot around here. Seems like a broken barrel... Can't really check that out, but... Uh, ooh, lots of candles apparently here as well. But this is probably the chest. Charité Gontran, the Tufo's journal. So there we go, Tufo. Uh, the silver sword, ursine armor and gauntlets. And a bit of Beauclair wine. Let's read the journal. 17th of May, 1243. Finally, a response to my notice. A witcher, big as a mountain and bearded as a dwarf. He asked about the contract, then said he'd take it for about as much coin as we've set aside for Fifi's dowry. That's some nerve, but I had no other choice, I had to agree. Next day, the Witcher claims the problems are caused by some subterranean monster. He searched the area and found an entrance to, entrance to a complex of caves by a stream in the Marquesant forest. He plans to enter through it tomorrow. Two days later, the Witcher hasn't returned. Some elf from the city asked about him, now that's some nerve, giving our address to non-humans. And then a week later, enough of this, I'll never hire a witcher again. It will soon be 10 days since he took this, his retainer and disappeared. I plan to sell the things he left behind to recover at least a portion of my losses. Too bad he mostly just left scraps with scribblings that no one will want to purchase. Looks like he came here to hunt the shale mar I slew. Yes indeed. Except he failed to make it home. Because, yeah, I kind of made that connection already as well. So the, the Tufo monster that we slayed was actually something that was prowling this area for a while now. And uh, that witcher probably lost his life fighting it. Just gonna loot the rest of this place because apparently lots of diamond dust in this area. Grey armor die and then... Oh, where the hell does this actually lead? Does this go all the way... What the hell? Hello? Because this keeps going. Any more secret areas? There's one over here and... Guarded treasure apparently. Interesting. I'm gonna loot everything in here. And then... No monsters then. That is interesting. Oh shit! Yep. Never mind. Take that back. There we go. That's cool gear for the win. So, is that the ghost of either of these people? Is that another? Besotted clerk's journal. I've decided I shall ask her tomorrow. A man only lives once. We agreed to meet at the usual place at noon. Clarissa has asked for a half day off and I'll sneak away from the chancellery. That old fogey of a supervisor will never notice I'm missing and even if he did, so what? I'm young, I'll find other work. Although, if Clarissa found out I'd lost my job, she might not agree. I'd have proposed to her ages ago, where I'm not aware how much she fears a life of poverty. She's never said as much, but I can see it worries her. But what are we waiting for? Together we shall live more economically than apart. And finally, we shall not have constantly to scheme up ways to meet here. I wanted to invite her to dine at the best eatery in all of Beauclair. So many times I have imagined what it would be like. Waiters decked out in golden livery would bring us foie gras and sorbet. Clarissa would sit on a satin, satin cushion, a raven black crown of hair on her head and looking beautiful, the most beautiful woman in all the room. Then I would pull out a diamond ring, but the truth is I shall never be able to afford all that. Not even if Clarissa were to insist a ring of simple silver would be enough for her and we'd be better off spending that coin to buy a house in Hauteville where we would open up a shop and she could sell hats. Thus I shall propose to her tomorrow in the abandoned wine cave which served as our meeting place, our cozy sanctuary where we have spent so many pleasant hours together. She never complained that her only romantic moments have been spent surrounded by cobwebs and old barrels of wine. But tomorrow marks the end of all that. Once we are wed, I will carry her across my threshold. It will be tight quarters, 
but there will be room enough for a bed, and there will be no cobwebs. I've only a simple copper ring for her with a red glass jewel of the cheapest sort, but I promise in a year's time I will exchange it for a silver one with an amethyst or maybe even a ruby. Oh Clarissa, tomorrow cannot come soon enough. I think I shall not be able to fall asleep tonight. But they died. What happened? Did that raid just kill them? Or was that was there something else here? Because I thought the raid was just one of their corpses, their vengeful uh, corpses, but there might have been a raid here all along. And the rose petals... Oh god, that was... That's really sad. The rose petals and the candles that were leading her to uh, his proposal. But then they sadly died, were killed by the wraith, probably. That's sad. But next up we need to check the entrance to the underground cave from the Shalemar we killed, probably. And we need to follow some symbols on the walls as well. So I'll see you guys there in a minute. The Marquescent Forest. I saw movement over there. Oh, it's just a deer. Just a deer. So I'll probably have to enter the cave down below. And that's where those markings will be. Did you just take damage from that? That, was, that wasn't even that high. Hello? What the hell is that? Can I drop down here? No? No dropping down because there's a corpse over there. Probably gonna have to take the long route then. Are these the caves that I entered for the two foam monster? I'm not really sure anymore. Hello? This doesn't look like it. Could drop down here, I suppose. And then over here to the right. Open door. Okay, so this is the area where I killed the two foam monster. Now we have um, a tunnel over here. Uh, more tunnels, apparently. Um, let's go over here, and there seems to be a corpse over there. Oh, and the markings. There we go. The markings of the the bear school gear. More symbols. I want to look around some. Eat me. Okay. Follow the symbols on the ground, and then over here. There's more over here, and then there. Is that the corpse of the Witcher? Must be the corpse of the Witcher from the School of the Bear. Okay, and there we have the rest of the diagrams immediately. The Trousers Steel Sword and the Boots, and then the Junot of Belhaven's Journal. Damn it, should have never taken this contract. Still not sure what sort of monster I'm up against. It's a shale mark. Worried I won't be able to prepare properly. Stupid of me to bet the coin I set aside for armor. Elves just love squeezing folk of their last copper, and those skin flints at 2-4 aren't any better. But no point feeling sorry for myself, and no point going back until I got a full set of gear. Well, as long as you're sinking, might as well walk on the bottom. I'll find a way, damn it. We should have never taken this risk. Must have really wanted the armor. I can probably make really good use of these diagrams. So the elven, the uh, notes were probably the elven master that uh, Lafarge worked for and learned his uh, his craft from. Interesting. So this this man, Junot of Belhaven, lost his uh, lost his life in trying to get himself some Grandmaster armor. Luckily we didn't lose our life because we already killed the Shale Shale Mark. But uh, let's get back outside. What's this? Another corpse. Silver Emerald necklace, thank you very much. Um and we're gonna head back uh, outside. I'll see you guys back at Lafarge. So back in Hauteville, so that's where uh, the Elven Master was as well. So I think that kind of confirms that the Elven Master described in the uh, in the notes and the journals was the same man that uh, the Farge lured his trade from. So let's craft this lovely set. Greetings. I hope your search goes well. It goes very well, although this quest is kind of bugged because it didn't complete for me for the moment. But I'd like you to craft something for me. Would you craft something for me? Of course. So, Grandmaster Earthsign Boots, the master crafted boots, Slizzard Hide, Enriched Time Radium Plate, Monster Saliva, and Tree Monster Tooth. Teeth. Teeth, probably. So, Grandmaster Earthsign Boots, completed. Grandmaster Earthsign Armor, the master crafted armor, two Slizzard Hides, two Enriched Time Radium Plates, one Monster Essence, and one Monster Heart. There we go. The Grandmaster Ursine Gauntlets, the Mastercrafted Gauntlets, Slizzard Heart, Enriched Time Radium Ingot, Ingot, Ingots, and not plates for some reason, uh, Monster Claws and Monster Tissue, there we go. 
the Grandmaster Earth Sign Silver Sword, the Mastercrafted Silver Sword, Letter Scraps, Enriched Amiridium Ingots, Monster Saliva, and Monster Tongue. There we go. The Grandmaster Earth Sign Steel Sword, the Mastercrafted Sword, Letter Scraps, two Enriched Amiridium Ingots, one Monster Blood, and one Monster Brain. Wavy Wavy Steel Sword, here we go. And then finally, the Grandmaster Trousers need the Mastercrafted Trousers. One infused lizard hide, one enriched diamond plate. I made one too many. But that's not bad because I can use that for the Manticore gear. Two monster hair and two monster essence. There we go. The complete set completed once again. So with that done, let's check it out outside. So thank Good you, Lafarge. On the path. Thank you very much. And let's see how that looks outside. So yeah, look at this. So the fur, uh, there's a, a patch of fur that has been added. It's uh, a bit more reinforced than it was before, and I think the blue tint is gone. There was a, a little blue lining around the uh, chainmail. Maybe that was a bug, but there was a bit of a lining there, and that's apparently gone. So the green is back in the trousers, and yeah, I think I'm gonna go in, inside actually. Uh, the lighting is better inside, I feel. So there we go. Look at that lovely piece. Can I actually draw my sword here? Yeah. So that's the steel sword. Can't really see it right now because Gerald's in the way. But yeah, a wavy, wavy steel sword. And then we have the silver sword. Uh, kind of looks pretty standard. So the standard with the, the diagonal hilt. Yeah, very, very nice. So let's check out the stats. Because yeah, again, very interesting how that turns out. So again, as with the medium gear, it's not that more powerful. If we... the check that out compared to for example the viper gear which is actually really easy to make and uh, compare that it's only five more armor which is medium armor compared to heavy armor it's even worse if you check out the feline armor because that's light armor and it's the same armor it's the same armor stat while the ursine armor is heavy so yeah why would you ever wear the ursine armor that's a bit bad and then we have the Steel Sword, mostly focused on uh, critical hits and adrenaline points. So, well, very fitting towards uh, Skellige and a lot of resistances, mostly for physical damage um, and a bit of elemental damage, but mostly physical damage, which is also very fitting. Um, and then the, the bonuses you can get, the Grandmaster bonuses, are for three items you get. When a Quench Shield shatters, there is a chance a new one will be cost at no stamina cost. The bonus increases by 5% for each piece of the set. Current chance, 30%. So you only have a 30% chance that when your quench shield shatters, you get an automatic new one. And then we have at 6 items, so the complete set. Damage dealt by abilities involving the quench sign is increased by 200%. That could make you pretty much invincible. Um, because the most damage you can do with Quen is, well, you could do a bit of damage with the explosion but 200% won't do that much on that but the uh, reflection perk you can get that reflects damage back at the attacker when it hits the quench shield might actually automatically kill most enemies if you just have an active quen uh, bubble shield on but aside from that not really that good of an armor set i feel um it is there if you want it because it really looks cool of course you have that scalic feel about it but yeah i don't really feel like it's all that useful it looks cool but that's pretty much it um yeah so that's that's it for the grandmaster ursan gear but a bit well not that good for what you really need to do for it because you really need to do a lot for these grandmaster gear uh sets but yeah there we have it at least uh that's another set completed the only thing we need to do now the only set we're still missing is the manticore gear and uh, with that done, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. I hope this guide helped you out a bit if you wanted the Earthside armor. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, don't forget to uh, give it a thought to subscribe to the channel. Because I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. Any support you can uh, give the babbling Belgian. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video series. Goodbye. Yeah,